Hi, once again, everyone. Believe in Bills, Adam Benini and Buffalo Sal Mayorana in Rochester. Sal, how you doing? I am good, Adam. I don't know what my internet problems are here in the sticks of Rochester, but um, we're going to try a different way today. Hopefully it works out. But uh, a great day. I mean, it was a gorgeous day. You know, for the first time in two weeks at camp, Adam, I didn't melt away five pounds walking around the town because <laughs> we actually had a pleasant morning. It was cool. It was sunny. It was beautiful. So it was actually a nice day uh, to be at camp. Unfortunately, it's ending tomorrow here at, here at Fisher. Yeah, I, I would ask you about that, too. I mean, for so long, and it's something that Brandon Bean and Sean McDermott have, have stayed with, the idea they like uh, – removing the team and kind of getting away from the facility, which bucks a trend in the National Football League. So many teams uh, prefer to stay at home because the resources and the facilities are are top-notch. They are no exception with Buffalo and that training center they have uh, in Orchard Park, but they really do place value on this. Um, what's your sense of it, – it seems like it's, it's going to be a feature for them moving forward, albeit a, a reduced – length of stay there. Yeah, I mean, as long as McDermott's the coach and Brandon Bean's the, the general manager, this team is going to come to Fisher for, for two weeks in the summer. They, you know, there was a time, Adam, when, you know, when they were building the facility over in Buffalo and you were wondering if it was all pointing towards just having training camp back at one Bills Drive. And then we had the COVID year. It was actually two years because 21, they stayed back home too. And you wondered, man, maybe they're just done with this. But you know, in 2022, McDermott made it very clear he wants to get away. He thinks there's a he thinks there's great value in being, you know, on campus, football only, no distractions, no family, no nothing. Guys in the dorm room, you know, living their college years back again. He really finds value in it. And I, quite frankly, you talk to a lot of the players here. I, I would say not all of them, but I think a good chunk of them, led by Josh Allen, really enjoy being away as a team for two weeks. So, as I said, as long as he's the head coach, uh, they're going to be in Rochester. The next guy who comes in down the road, maybe he'll have a different viewpoint. But, yeah, they're going to be here for, for two weeks every year. You know, you can criticize Sean McDermott for a number of things. The flip side of that, they've done an awful lot of winning. Four straight division championships. And one thing, you consider what they inherited uh, when he came in back in, in 2017, Sal, um, and the building of the culture, I guess, is what I'm getting at. What he and Brandon Bean have done. Um, and I, I do think, especially at a formative time with so many new uh, pieces and players over there, that, that they do make the most of this opportunity. I think the results have borne that out in terms of the success and how well St. John Fisher has served this this team and this franchise. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, really, yeah, the only guys that don't like it are the equipment guys who have to pack everything up and move it back and forth. Um, the players, I, I do I, I do think they like it. They, they go up in their dorm room, they're playing whatever the new video game is, and they have tournaments, and they just like hanging out as guys. And I think, you know, a lot of kids that age, right, most of these guys are kids, at least compared to you and me, um, they like it, bonding together and not having to worry about what's happening at home or, you know, fixing whatever they got to fix that their significant other wants taken care of. It's all football at St. John Fisher. And at the campus, you've been here a million times. The campus is so receptive to everything. They Everything is nearby. The, the dorms, the, the meeting rooms, the practice fields, the weight room, the cafeteria. It's all right there in a central location. It's a perfect place and I think if other teams had a situation like this, you'd see more teams go away for training camp. All right, so let's get into it a little bit now with the first preseason game coming up, uh, a home game on uh, on Saturday against the Chicago Bears. Receiver, uh, in our first edition the other day, we got into the receiver position. It is uh, one of the big headlines over there, a, a position that the Bills are moving on from Stephon Diggs. A lot of attention, some question marks, some talent they're dealing with as well, and kind of a different philosophical approach. So, so something that came up, I think it was uh, it was certainly on my my Twitter, my X feed, uh, and it may have been mentioned in the YouTube responses to our first installment uh, of Believe in Bills the other day. But obviously, Brandon Ayuk and that whole situation, the 49ers receiver, uh, the teams that are in the mix, they're now entertaining trade discussions and, and for Ayuk contract conversation is going to be extremely expensive. Patriots are now out of the mix. Steelers and Browns still reportedly in there and uh, perhaps 
uh, one or two others uh, based on the reports that I read just before we re- recorded this. Uh, the bills have not been seriously mentioned. And I understand that there are a number of reasons for it, not the least of which is is the salary cap situation, um, what the ramifications of bringing a guy like that in here at this stage would be looking down the road. And again, the overall philosophy they seem to be taking and going into this season without a true A1 uh, with the, and moving on from Stefan Diggs. So should the Bills be interested in, in, in shaking things up, restructuring deals and, and potentially bringing a guy in like that, making room for him? Or should, should they just stick to the approach they seem to be taking right now? Well, look, I, I think obviously Brandon Bean should kick the tires, right? I mean, he should be involved in any discussion of a top player like Brandon Ayuk. The Bills are in a Super Bowl window. Whether people want to believe that or not, they are. They're still, to me, the best team in the AFC East. So they're in it, and you got to be in it to win it, right? So they should be involved. I just don't think, given what we saw in the offseason, how, how they moved on from Stefan Diggs, they needed to clean up their cap, and that's it was a significant cleanup for the next two years. I mean, they're in good shape now moving forward. So, you know, do you really want to go right back into cap jail and bring in a guy like Ayuk? To me, I wouldn't do it, and I, and I don't think Brandon Bean's going to going to consider it either. They've got Curtis Sam. They've got a veteran group of guys with Curtis Samuel. We can call Shakira veteran now that he's in year three. Um, we'll see on Valdez Scantling. Um, Chase Claypool seems to be working himself off the team because he can't stay healthy. And then you've got Keon Coleman and some young guys. So I think they like the direction that they're going with the receiver room. They've kind of moved on from the number one guy, right, which is what Diggs was. Mm -hmm. It seems like in camp, and and Josh has been asked about this, but he really hasn't, you know, shed any light on, do you feel better not having to force feed a guy like Stefan Diggs? which I think we could all agree there was probably some of that going on all four years where he felt like he had to look to Diggs first. Now he's free. He's free from that, and he can get everybody else involved. So that's why I don't think Ayuk is the proper fit, at least right now, for the Bills, and I don't see them getting involved in it. Yeah, I think they've taken a number of steps to straighten things out in terms of the cap. Look, this is – we had – Bill Polian, uh, former Bills GM, the Hall of Fame general manager on Sports Talk Live toward the end of the season. And he made a, a very good point, as he often does. Talked about when when you have a franchise quarterback, like an elite quarterback like Josh Allen, and, and you're paying that guy, which, of course, the Bills uh, now are. You really have, Bill said, you know, theoretically, hopefully the guy plays like 12 years, right? And... Within that, you really have two, what he referred to as basically like championship window type cycles, right? Bills have been through one. They went for it. Stefan Diggs was a part of that. I think, you know, the 13 second loss in, in Kansas City, if they get out of that game with a win, I think that's the year they, they are I think they beat Cincinnati at home in the AFC championship game. And I think they go in perfect conditions in so far. They go in and they beat the Rams. I think they would have won it that year. They blew it in in KC in an epic fashion, obviously. But moving on from that, they've clearly taken steps now to get younger and reset this roster and to move into, to kind of shape things and, and, and put pieces around Josh Allen. And then we're in the initial phase of that, right? For the back half of Allen's career, they're in a window no matter what, when Allen is in there. But I'm of the opinion they might take a little bit of a step back this year. I'm a little bit um, skeptical about how young they are at some key positions and how much younger they're getting. But, you know, you just don't know how quickly that young talent is going to develop. But I do think it's clear they're doing the exact right thing and taking the right steps and retooling this roster and shaping things up. So if you add Ayuk, yeah, I mean, he's a legitimate A1 receiver. But if that has ramifications in – in terms of what you're going to be able to do, you have to restructure deals to get him under now and what it's going to mean next season, the year after. 
successively as you want to extend this window and keep it open as long as possible, then I agree with you 100%. Yeah. I mean, I don't do it. But, I don't make a move like that as expensive as it's going to be. Yeah. I, I just, I don't, that's what you're, you, you spelled, there's nothing more I should even say there. You spelled it out exactly the way it is. I think they are, I think they obviously don't expect that they're going to take a step back. They're going full bore. They think they can take this team and go win a Super Bowl. That's how they have to think. But I also think in the back of their minds, the way they cleaned up the cap by moving on from Diggs and doing some other things, next offseason, regardless of what happens this year, they're going to be doing some things to look forward to 2025 and really, like you said, make that second run at the Super Bowl. I, I've said right along, I don't think this team is going to win a Super Bowl this year. I think they can win 11 games and, and you know be a playoff team. I don't see them making that leap, whether it's past Cincinnati or Kansas City or whoever it is, this season. Now, it could happen, but I don't think it will. But I think next year, they've really got it in their minds, what they did this past offseason, that right. the moves, they've got moves planned next offseason to bulk this roster up and, like you said, make that second go around. 2021, you're absolutely right. That was the chance. Just like it was in 1990 when Norwood missed the kick, that was the one chance they had to win a Super Bowl that the other three were disasters. 2021, if they never win a Super Bowl in the McDermott Bean era, they're going to rue that day for the rest of their careers. Uh, it was just, yeah, I don't want to relive that now. But 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 I think the, the point that we're both making here when – you know, someone, a, a listener, a reader, or a user asks you about Ayuk and should the Bills be in the mix. I think there's a broader context uh, to that decision and what they're trying to do. And I, I think that's what we're trying to present here on Believe in Bills. Josh was asked today um, after practice, uh, you know, do you miss Diggs? And you referenced some of this discussion a little bit earlier in your comments. Uh And he said, well, you always miss a guy like that, but really likes, as you would expect him to say, likes what they have in the receiver room right now. But he mentioned they've really started to form an identity. Those words stood out to me. I think it's important at this time of year, I think, especially given the the magnitude of the changes and the approach that they're taking. What did you take away from his remarks today with regard to that? Yeah, I mean, he's, he's made it his mission almost to not say anything derogatory to dig towards digs. He's been kissing him, giving him his flowers, you know, saying that he's respect. He respects him. They're still good friends, all of that. But like I said earlier, Adam, I do believe that the bills are better off moving forward without Stefan Diggs. And I sort of believe that Josh Allen understands that. I think he realizes that it was probably time to turn the page. I mean, I thought Diggs. we've talked about it in the first episode. Diggs, I think is a player in slight decline. He'll still be very good for the Texans. But he wasn't the same player that he was the first three years in Buffalo. And, yeah, the Bills, of course, are going to miss that player, that player from 20 to 22. But I think they've taken steps this year with the guys they brought in to make up for the difference or the, the loss of Stefan Diggs. You, you, and we've mentioned you got to add Dalton Kincaid into that mix, too. He's basically a receiver at this point. He said They say he's a tight end, but he's basically a receiver. So I think Josh has been very careful to make sure he gives he gives Diggs all the praise and make sure that everyone knows they're still buddies. But I think he was perfectly fine with the decision that, that the organization made to move on. And I think he thinks that he can get a lot out of the guys that he has right now as the weapons. Okay, so first preseason game coming up on Saturday, as I mentioned earlier, uh, at home against the uh, Chicago Bears. And uh, Josh was asked today, still no decision on playing time, that sort of thing. We always talk about this with regard to the, uh, the preseason games, the risk reward, right? And uh, in terms of playing starters, what do you get out of it? What do you risk in terms of injury? Uh, those types of things. Josh said, as you would expect him to, he'll do whatever. I find it interesting. And, and uh, you know, Andy Reid um, has played as starters in the past, and it just came down before we recorded this that Patrick Mahomes, the starter, is probably going to play about a quarter in their preseason opener. So as we await kind of the plan from Sean McDermott, I would ask you this. In light of the changes we're talking about, um, particularly in the receiver room, how much would Josh conceivably 
benefit from, from being in there for a few reps to give them some actual game reps in the preseason game? Can they accomplish everything they need to in practice or would they, is it worth the risk to put them out there? I guess is what I'm asking you uh, because he's dealing with some new personnel. There. Yeah, you're right. You are weighing risk. I mean, to me, and he even said this, even though he said, I don't know if I'm playing or not. I, I'm sure he does know, but he just won't tell us. But he did say all reps are valuable. And, you know, it's kind of a throwaway line, but there is something to that. I mean, I don't see the harm in throwing them out there for a series in the first quarter just to get them back in the in the routine of doing it. And as you said, he's got – there's only one guy, that one wide receiver that's caught a pass from Josh Allen in a game, and that's Shakir. So why not throw him out there? Get him some run. You know, you don't have to do it every preseason game, but maybe for the home opener, throw him out there and see what's going on and then move on to Trubisky and Bouchelle. I don't think it will hurt. I think the risk is pretty minimal, especially when you're Josh Allen, right? He knows how to escape pressure, and I don't think he'll be running downfield in a preseason game. I'm pretty sure he'd slide or get out of bounds. He's smart enough to do that when it doesn't matter. So, yeah, I don't have a problem with them doing that, but I don't think I, I, you, I, your memory is probably better than me. Did he play last year at all? I don't think he did. I don't think he played in the preseason game last year. I thought he did in the second one. Did he? I'd have to look that up. But he, um, if he did, it was very minimal. He played almost yeah. hardly at all in the preseason. So, you know, I can understand why they wouldn't put him out there, but to me, I don't think it was a big risk in doing it. All right. Uh, First depth chart came out today, and this is it's, – it's not anything I think any of us take seriously uh, at all. I would ask you, I'm sure you've got a glance at that. Does anything it, – it, is it, there anything noteworthy at, at this point in the preseason to take away from that? No, I don't think so. I think you're, they're putting names on a piece of paper at this point, um, you know, showing a little bit of respect to guys I think that have already been there. But we're not going to know. The depth chart, Adam, is not going to matter until week one – when they're playing the Cardinals, right? I mean, it just it's not going to matter to me at all, um, especially in these preseason games. They are going to run through guys throughout all three games. You're, you know, it's going to be like hockey lines changing back and forth. You're never going to see the same group for too long. So I, I don't play into it at all. I think all teams are supposed to put out a depth chart before their first game. I don't really mm-hmm. put a whole lot of thought into it. So I would, if I'm a fan – Looking at the depth chart, I would not read too much into what you're seeing there. Yeah, I agree with that 100%. All right, we just have a a couple of minutes left here. And one of the areas we didn't hit on on Monday, and I wanted to get your read on, um, some encouraging signs from Von Miller uh, here in the preseason. Coming off uh, the ACL injury, we all know those tend to be, uh, really it's two years uh, I've actually had ortho guys tell me this, and we've seen it play out on the field so many times. Trey White was a, a, a very good example of it um, as well. And then, of course, he had the Achilles. But um, in Von Miller's case, clearly when he came back, not not the same player that he was before. Um, it, it really takes two years before a player feels completely himself from an athletic standpoint. Um in terms of that knee, uh, some positive signs from him. What have you seen from Von Miller in camp so far? Yeah. I mean, I, he does, he looks more agile when they're in the team drills, particularly. Um, again, we'll see. I mean, you, you got to do it on the field in a game situation when things are much different, but I think you're going to see, well, it's, it's, how could he not be better than he was mm. here? Right. It's a dumb thing to say, but I think you're going to see a better version of Von Miller. He does look healthier to me. Um, I'm not going to say at 30, was he 35 years old now, that he has all the burst that he had even in 22 before he got hurt when he first came to Buffalo. I'm not sure he has that same burst, but I think there's enough in his repertoire, you know, that veteran experience, the moves that he can incorporate. I think he's going to be more, much more of a factor this year. Again, it's hard to tell in these, in these training camp practices. And I doubt and that's a guy that I doubt you're going to see. Right, you're not going to see him. I don't think Mal- right. was going to be out in the preseason games. So we're not going to get to see him until week one. But from what you see athletically, it does look like he is a better version of himself than he was at any point in 2023. Yeah, you know, he's obviously battling father time now, as you said. Uh, but in terms of within, 
you know, the context of a, of an ACL recovery, um, I think there is some reason to be optimistic in terms of the signs that he's shown and, and, and how these things tend to kind of uh, work themselves out as, as players rehab and really kind of hit their stride uh, a couple of years after. So that's going to do it for hold this on, edition. Hold on, Adam. One, real quick, I just saw a notice came across on my phone. Deion Dawkins was not at practice today. Yeah. And it just it, they just sent out a little notice that it was a personal matter. So I know okay. I know some guys were tweeting about, hey, where's Dawkins? Is he hurt? It, it's not an injury. Something was going on with a personal thing. So he was excused from practice. So I just wanted to get that because it just literally popped up as I'm okay. popping up here. So uh, not an injury, just something going on. I'm sure he'll be back. Uh, if not tomorrow, then certainly by the by game day on Saturday. All right. Good to hear. Sal, thanks for the update. We appreciate it. Believe in Bills. Uh, here, uh, another weekly installment as we or we're going to do three of these a week, I think. Uh, we will try and get one more in when we know the the, uh, the game plan from the coaching standpoint uh, for Saturday and the matchup with the uh, Chicago Bears in the preseason opener. So, Sal Marana, Rochester Democrat and Chronicle. Any final thought? Yeah, I just want to say, I mean, our first episode did, uh, looks like people were into it. We saw a lot of comments on on YouTube and, you know, you and I, I think we, we're going to interact with fans. We want to build that subscriber base and that's how to do it. So I was very encouraged by, you know, just jumping out of the gate here to get, uh, to get a pretty healthy viewership. So we hope it continues. We hope it builds, uh, tell people to uh, pass it along to other bills fans, right? Uh, if you see us mm-hmm. pass it along and we would appreciate it. So yeah, it's good. Yeah. Friday. I think we come mm-hmm. back again and uh, maybe look ahead to the bears game and, uh, I'll wrap up training camp, too, because that closes out here on Thursday. All right. Well, Sal, thanks. We appreciate your work, as always. We thank you for your support. A lot of success and um, viewership and and listenership right out of the gate here in Believe on Bill. So we appreciate that. We're going to do our best to bring you uh, the the, the very latest updated information and takes that uh, draw on our uh, combined over 70 years of experience covering this team. You can read Sal's work. Rochester Democrat and Chronicle. I am Adam Benini, WGRZ TV, host of Sports Talk Live Buffalo Monday nights at 7 o'clock on Channel 2. That starts up uh, week one of the NFL season. Thanks for being with us on Believe in Bills. 